In this video, we'll talk about the foot and the differential diagnosis of patients who come with foot pain. So here we have the foot and here in the back we have the callus tendon and here we have connection between the calcaneus and the digital bones with tendons and fibrous tissue. So if the patient comes with posterior foot pain you have to think about a callus tendonitis. It's a gradual onset disease and it's very common in runners. Now, secondary causes can also be present and most commonly or the ones that we are always looking for medications like fluoroquinolones and reactive arthritis. Now, in examination, they will have redness and tenderness and make sure to know that Achilles tendinitis is a clinical diagnosis disease. You don't need to do any imaging or any labs test. Now, for treatment, it's conservative basically and physical therapy. Rice, which means rest, ice, compression, and elevation. What you need to know for real and for the exam is the steroids. Because many times the steroids work for inflammation or tendinitis. In Achilles tendinitis, don't use steroids. Next, let's talk about the fascia here and what we know as plantar fasciitis. Now it's very common, so you need to know this for practical reasons as well as for the exams. You need two clinical criteria to diagnose plantar fasciitis. Morning pain when they start stepping on their feet and a physical finding where you can increase the plantar fasciitis pain by dorsiflexion of the ankle or the big toe. So we can understand now it's a clinical diagnosis and the treatment is going to be rice as well in addition to some stretching exercises. Now, if that fails, here we can use steroids compared to a tendinitis treatment. But you have to educate the patients that steroids injection can cause atrophy in the lower part of the feet. And unfortunately, surgery here does not help much if you have failure with the other treatments. Now I would like to talk a little bit about bone spurs. Now you need to know that the spurs by themselves they don't mean anything and you don't treat them. You only treat them if they are associated with the plantar fasciitis i.e. you are actually treating plantar fasciitis and when the patient improves then you have to stop the treatment. The reason is around 10% of the population they have these spurs and only 5% will have the symptoms. So it is controversial. Are these symptoms related to the spur itself or these people have plantar fasciitis that's causing them to have these symptoms? That's why it's not advisable to treat spurs by themselves. And this is very important from practical standpoint as well because there are a lot of misconception about these spurs. And next we'll talk about tarsal tunnel syndrome which is present usually in the anterior side of the foot and these patients will present like carpal tunnel syndrome with paresthesia mainly and pain. Weakness is uncommon in these patients as well. And this concludes this video. Hope you guys learned something and see you in the next one.